What is your expected value on the following game? It involves a single roll of a die. If you roll a 1, 3, or 5, you make 1, 3, or 5 dollars, respectively. If you roll 2, 4, or 6, you lose 2, 4, or 4 dollars, respectively. Notice that it's not 2, 4, 6, right? It's 2, 4, 4. Pay attention to that. Okay, so this is an expected value problem. I think that's pretty clear by this statement here. What's your expected value on the following game? Um, we're going to assume, I guess, that you are... Um, rolling the die to play the game, so you're going to pick up a die, throw it on the ground, and you're looking to see what the ultimate uh, average value is that you're expecting to make. Okay, so for all expected value problems, the best idea is to create a table, right? And the table will usually involve um, an x value and what we call a probability of x value, right? So for each um, table, we're going to have these columns, the column that lists the outcome in terms of dollar amount, and then the probability that that outcome occurs. All right, now, from there, what we want to do next is kind of um, think about the controlling event. You know, what event is going to determine what dollar amounts are paid out, right? And since we're rolling a die, since it involves a single roll of a die, of course, the event is the outcome or number on the die, right? So what numbers are possible when you roll the die? Well, you're going to have either the number, so I'll put it over here, the roll, right, up in the corner, just so we know. This is not actually part of our table, it's just kind of off to the side to make us think, right? The roll could either be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Those are the only possible outcomes that you can have when you roll the die. From there, you now let's make some rows in our table now based on these outcomes. Trying my best to be neat here. From there, we're going to have corresponding dollar amounts that are going to happen. And we're going to put positive next to the gain and negative next to the losses to make sure we don't forget that as we work out the problem. Okay, so if I roll a one, if I roll a one, it says I will make a dollar. So I'm going to put a plus one, and I'm doing it in green to remind me that that's money we're dealing with, right? Um, if I roll a three, I'll make three dollars. So for the three, I'll have plus three. If I should roll a five, I'll end up with five dollars, so plus five. All right, now for the other ones, there'll be losses, right? If I roll a two, I lose two bucks, so I end up with minus two dollars. If I roll a four, I lose four dollars, minus four dollars. And if I roll a six, I lose four dollars again, minus four. Okay, now at that point, once I have that done, the next step is to multiply these numbers times their probabilities, but I have to know their probabilities. This problem doesn't mention any probabilities. So that means it must be something I can figure out on my own. Well, a roll of a die has a nice simple probability distribution, right? We know that the chance you roll a 1 is the same as the chance you roll a 2 is the same as the chance you roll a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. Each one of those probabilities is 1 sixth because it's one option out of the six numbers on the die. So I know it'll be 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, and lastly, 1 sixth. Very easy. All right. Now from there, the rest of it is really just a matter of performing the actual calculation for expected value. That calculation, remember, involves x times p of x. We have to multiply those columns together. When we're done, our answer appears at the bottom, and that will be the mean or the expected value. Uh, notice another notation for this is the expected value of x. You see that a lot as well. Same thing, mean expected value. Okay, so this is actually pretty easy to do in our head, so let's go ahead and do it. We have 1 times 1 sixth, that's going to be just 1 sixth. Then I'm going to have negative 2 times 1 sixth, we'll call that negative 2 sixth. Don't bother to reduce because we're going to later need to um, add these fractions. It's easier if they have a common denominator. 3 times 1 sixth is 3 sixth, right? Four time, negative 4 times 1 sixth is negative 4 sixths. Watch those negatives, make sure you keep them in place. 5 times 1 sixth is 5 sixths. And then lastly, negative 4 sixths again. Okay, so now let's add these together and see what we get. So if I add 1 sixth to negative 2 sixths, I get negative 1 sixths, right? Negative 1 sixth and 3 sixths give me 2 sixths again, right? Okay, then 2 sixths. And minus 4 6 is minus 2 6, minus 2 6, and 5 6 is 3 6, and 3 6, and negative 4 6 is negative 1 6. 
you want to double check that, just do this. Just add up the negatives together. We have negative 2, negative 4, that's negative 6, that's negative 10. And if you add the positives, you have 5 and 3 is 8 and 9. So that's 9 versus negative 10. You have negative 1 6 left over. Okay, great. So negative 1 6. It's probably a good idea to divide that to go ahead and get a decimal representation because we're dealing with money here. It's better if we have it as, um, this is 1 6 of a dollar. So in other words, we're going to do 1 divided by 6 and realize that that's about 17 cents or so. So that's approximately minus 0.17. That's 17 cents, right? 0.17 of a dollar.